eons have passed since the book was created. The guardians were tasked to keep the book safe in the library that the father created to give souls that departed too young a second chance in rebirth. The book held the power to transcend time and space, giving the bearer the power to travel to times of birth and death, war and peace, joy and sorrow, to call loved ones from the grave. The lower earth housed evil beyond imagining, evil that coveted the book for its own nefarious schemes. The war commenced that lasted for five centuries of bloodshed and slaughter, and ending with the darkness defeated and a fragile truce struck by the Father, which kept powers of both darkness and light to their own domains. However, not wavered, the darkness tricked a young girl into obtaining the book for it, passing as equals. I would hear from time to time villagers from around the town saying how peaceful our town was. Can't wait till we go to the dance. I know, it's going to be exciting. And we're going to dance. But hey, did you see the baseball game last night? Yeah. The team got three struck and it was out. For the most part, it was. People playing, laughing, singing, and having fun. But there was an evil side to the town that only the ones who lived there knew. I know you love me! I'm sorry! So terrific! so harsh, most people wouldn't speak about it. The town had a history of evil that lurked. Where have you been? I've been out. Been out with that girl again, haven't you? Yes. Didn't I tell you not to see that girl anymore? Yes, Mom. Do you love her? Yes. Do you love her more than your mommy? Do you love her more than your mommy? I I don't love you like that, Mom. She makes me very happy. I don't make you happy. You, you do, but... Do you want to see Mommy hurt herself, Joshua? No, 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 Mommy, no. Do you want to see me hurt myself? No. Please. Well, then, I just have to hurt you. Give me your arm. Give me your arm. See what will make me 
do to you? I just couldn't stay away from that girl, could you? I love you. But you have to listen to me. Otherwise, bad things will happen. It's just me and you. Some say these evil events is what attracted the plague to our town. to our town. What's gonna happen to our town? What's gonna happen to our town? I can't tell you anything. My mom gets paid. She doesn't like it when I talk to you. You're the only person I can talk and play with. There is something evil that's going to happen to this town. What do you mean by that? It'll kill the women and you'll see the dead. Just wait and see. into the city and I'm going to show you one of the buildings that we're going to make. Wow. How big is it? It's about 13 stories. It's one of the biggest buildings in the city. Really big? Yeah. yeah. And when we're in the city, I'm going to take you to see a show. A play. What show? Um, it's called Le Micaia and it's supposed to be really nice. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. And how's my son doing today? You know, how'd you do with the baseball game yesterday? Good. Our team won the game. You did. You did. Were you pitching yesterday? No, I was in right field. You were in right field. Let me hit you again. Two. 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 Was um, Robert Anderson your, your best friend? He was. Yeah, he was on the opposite team. He was team. on the opposite team? Yeah. You know, son, <clears throat> speaking of uh, Robert Anderson, you know, Mr. Anderson, he owns the shop down the road. And I spoke to him yesterday. He had said uh, that he can use an extra hand around the shop. He said to me that he would hire you for a couple hours after school. Nothing comes before your studies, as you well know. Your mom and I have been really proud of you. you know? um, we're already proud. That's a good boy. What's for breakfast? Well, start with your tea. Okay. And then I'll bring you boys out some eggs, and then I got a little treat for you. Oh, I love when she says that. <laughs> I love when she says that. Come on, tell me what it is. Pork slab. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. You bring it right out. Go tell it on the mountain, <laughs> over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go.
that you? You know I can't see from that far away. Someone get a doctor. Get a doctor. My mom won't get mad. I won't tell anybody else. I can't tell you or anybody. I promise I'll keep it a secret. I'm sorry, I can't. Um, okay. My mom doesn't like it when I talk to you. Why can't we play? She says you're not like the others. I tried to warn all of them. I tried.
there's one thing I would like to discuss here today in class. It might be a little bit too much for your young minds, but I will make it very simple. There is a new theory. It is called the theory of evolution. Survival of the fittest. Do any of you know what survival of the fittest is? Show of hands. It has to do with only the strongest will survive. Only the stronger will live longer. Do we all understand today's lesson, children? Yes, Mr. Peter. Can I have a word with you in a second? Sure, Doctor. What seems to be fun. I'm going to need you to dismiss the kids. They have to go home. There's a way to get at the moment, but everyone in the town has been contracting something. Children, you know what? Today we will be dismissed early. It's a beautiful day outside. Go home to your parents. Enjoy the day. Thank you. Thank you. Take a look at you over here. Shake your hands. Look at me, Jaseel. Look at my eyes. Listen, I've been your family doctor for a long time now. I love Giselle too, but there's nothing that can be done. school today and the doctor came by and he had taken all the children out of school. He dismissed all of them. That has not happened and he even told me to go home and stay with my family. It's horrible. All these children turning up sick. What do you think? It's some kind of a plague? I don't know. Mrs. Molly told me her son was struck ill just last week and he can't get out of bed. Why isn't Pastor Minor worried? How do we know he's not worried? What do you think we should do? I don't know, but I don't want him going outdoors, and I don't want him around all the other children. 
hopefully it's just a passing thing, not a plague. I think he's fine. He'll be fine. Thank you. Examine Thomas three times. He has it. I, I don't know how to tell you this. The lesions are there, and once they get the lesions, there's no going back. It can't be true. We're going to make it as manageable as possible. We're going to try to keep him pain free.
guide this child through the gates of heaven. <laughs> So many of us. Ain't no cruel on my brother. That's not fair, Dad. It is fair, son. She's, she's so young. She's a, just, she was my baby. She's gone. My granddaughter. She's my so granddaughter. Much. Next, step right down, please. Next, I'll take the next child. Hello. Hi. Just Seal Lewis. Let's see, I have you here. Uh, born 1851 in a small town of Muses, Pennsylvania. How are you? Good. Well, let's see. It says here that you enjoy horseback riding, playing ball with your brother, and reading. You're a reader. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, where am I? Well, Jaseel, you are in the library. And just like all the other boys and girls waiting online, this is a magical place. A place where you can come to the library and pick any story in the book and become that character. But I want to go home. Well, yes, I know, but you can't go home, Jaseel. Once you've passed, you come to the library and you get ready for your new life. You choose a story in the book and, and we send you there. You see, you do remember being ill, right? You remember being ill? Yes, at... the doctor came to see me. Right, the doctors came and saw you, and um, you've passed on, and we're getting ready to give you another life in another part of the world. And this is why you come to the library and you pick a story. You can be anyone you want. You can go any place you want, and we send you there. I got it. I have a special place that I'm going to send you. You are going to be a carnival announcer in New York City. How about that? You could say, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Step right up, step right up. I am Jaseel. I'm your carnival announcer. Step right up. We have water that burns. Come see the one-foot man, the 900-pound woman, the bearded lady, and the human gorilla. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You'd be perfect for that. So how about carnival announcer it is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, what area in the world would you like to go into? You've read many books. Um... What fascinates you? I read a book about China, and I really want to go there. China, China, very interesting. People, culture, food. What would you like to do in China? Um, I want to be a teacher. A teacher in China. Well, China it is. I'm going to go get the China book. I'll be back, and then we'll launch you into your new life, OK? <laughs> Thank you. 
The little child that was here, did she warp? You didn't see her leave? No. Next! Parson, my subject went through the portal when she wasn't prepped. How did that happen? I don't know, I went up just to get a book real quick for China, and I came back and she's gone, but I feel it that she wasn't prepped, she went through the portal. I need to see the relic. No one sees the relic. Listen, tell the relic that Orr's would like to see him. I have an old relationship with him. Just make it happen. my body here? Well, my name is Jaseel, and, well, sadly, I died. Oh, Thomas, nice to meet you. Um, is this a dream? It's not a dream, but we have to go. So, you're saying this is the afterlife? Pretty much. Is there any way I can inform my body? I'm not too sure, but if you come with me to the library, maybe. I'll take that risk. Okay, come on. Who is that? I see my mom down there. Come here. Come play with me. Hold on tight. Don't let go. Relic, I can still see you're notorious for your places of meeting. We have a problem. You know what it is, but I can't let you track the child. She thought that she was hearing her mother's voices. Excuse me? Ma'am? Excuse me? Hello? You know they're not allowed to enter the library. For that reason alone, they broke the truth. I should be allowed to at least go track the girl and bring her back. She has a book. Most likely. They're after her right now to get that book. If they get it, it will mean disastrous consequences for the library. 
you know that. Hello? Let me go and bring the girl back. Fine. It's my guess that the girl has already walked at least three times and it will be impossible to find her. Do not pass the three minute mark. And remember, if you pass the six minute mark, not even I can bring you back. And bring two others with you, but guarantee me their safety back. Guaranteed. I wanted to bring you all here. We have a mission. It's very important that you listen. The rules have changed. And though you are the best trackers, there's been limits set on the game. The father has put a time limit on warping. You're not allowed more than three minutes. Anything more than six minutes, you'll be stuck there forever. I don't understand the three minute mark. Why do we let the evil lurk? You've been in a library too long, my friend. The three minute mark is because there's a truce. We're not supposed to be in that world. We are there for a mission. Our mission is to go and get the girl, bring her back safely with the book, and go back to the library. On your forearm will be a time code. The clock will start the moment you enter the next war and warn you the closer you get to three minutes. But even that one second after three minutes and don't test it, they will come at you with everything they have you will not be able to fight them off. If you're there past six minutes, you're done. Understood? Yes. Okay, let's bring back the girl safely. Okay, good luck. It's a little girl that that's nearby, and she's she's asking for help. We talked about this. Listen. You can't help her. If, if you do that, she'll never go away. She she, she needs the help. You, you it can't be done. You can't do it. We've already talked about this. We can't go back to this. And where, where is she? she? She's right behind you. Jules. Yes, Papa. Come here, sweetheart. to Mrs. Ray's daughter. She died of a fever. Of a fever? When did she die? Three days ago. Three days ago? Okay, thanks, sweetheart. You're welcome. Listen, you're not from this world no more. Don't come back around here. I can't help you. Do you hear me? I can't help you, but go down to the graveyard and it's a nun there that can help you. Don't come back around here no more.
Can you help me? Can you help me? Please help me. Help me. Help me. Can <laughs> <laughs> you help me? <laughs> My feet. <laughs> Expel the evilness out of you. Since you're going to visit me all this time. Maybe I've done some terrible things. Some very bad things. I'm not ready to come back. Well, are you going to stay? Aunt Bay? Aunt Bay? Don't worry about it. Let's get going. Okay. What are we gonna do now? I don't know. Take your life.
back to the library? Well, how can we trust you after all we've been through? Come closer. I'll tell you. Six minute warning. 
my son. impossible. Nobody can defy the six minutes and bring you back. I want him back. I tried to bring him back. I want him back. I tried to bring him back. He does not want to come back. Unacceptable. I want him back. Unless... Unless... That's impossible. Hello. Um, hi, um, we're lost. I don't think we belong here. Nonsense, child. It just takes some time to get used to. You're cursed, child. I can show you the way. You're cursed, child. I can show you the way. Things are a bit different here. They put me in here because they said I didn't love the children. I didn't care. Fools. I gave the children their freedom. They were trapped in a world that was infected by the sickness of greed. <laughs> Thomas and I were in the house and he touched the book. Child, you come to me. I can protect you. Don't be afraid. The book can take you to places. See death from a whole other perspective. Be there at the hour. The time to pass. Give me the book! Child! I said, give me the book!
What's the matter with you? It's not your mom. It's not your mom. What's the matter with you? Tricks won't work on me. <laughs> we had a cover several millennia ago. You kept the balance of the darkness, and I watched over and blessed you too. You broke the sacred order. The fire. Mountain of Cathay, parting of the earth in Rathenia, and the prestolus of a small village that ravaged the community of Philadelphia. Get them all. Get them all. And the people, in fear, turned not to me, but to you, a false messiah. I put the girl on this journey with the book in the library through the door to walk through the fires of hell to find you hiding. So I descended here to restore the balance and banish you, for you are no longer hold the reins of darkness. Greet your doom and languish in it for eternity.
to see you. You've had quite the journey. Can I have the book back? Thank you. Um, do you know where Thomas is? I've returned Thomas to his original place with his mother, where they're both going to live a long and happy life. And you, you've been keeping me very busy trying to find you. Now that I've found you, no more travels with the book. Take my hand. There's one more journey to go. And count backwards to five. Ready? Here we go. Five. No one ever spoke about the plague that ripped throughout our town. They believed if the people were silent, it would never return. Sometimes, when I lay in bed at night, it starts to hit me. I begin to ask myself over and over if this was all a dream. I was lucky, given a second chance. The doctor says I miraculously recovered. Then sometimes, I'm always quickly reminded it was a reality.